Hello, I am Dr. Loren M. Hill. I am your academic career coach with Acclivity. And today my guest is Lynn Chamberlain. Lynn is a successful brander. I will call her the brand maven. I just called her that. You know, that's something I've made up. She has her own branding name, but I just call her a maven because she has worked with colleges, universities, nonprofits, top tier institutions, and she's actually an Emmy award winning producer. So we'll get into some of that, um, you know, history of what she's done and why her path has led her to being a brand expert, branding expert. So welcome, Lynn. How are you doing today? Yep. Thank you. I'm all the better for talking to you. So this is a conversation that I'm very excited to have. Thank you. Thank you. So let's just get right into what what was your trajectory and how did it lead to branding? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, I believe in, in uh, sort of the power of the universe and then I thought I wanted to be a lawyer and I did so poorly on the LSATs that I uh, that that option was closed. Uh, and I think that uh, I, I ended up getting my very first job was at NBC in Washington as a lowly production assistant, really basically getting coffee for people. And and I realized that television, as I began to move through the ranks um, of Boston, New York, um, et cetera, that television is branding that it's really about telling a story. In other words, I was working in news for a long time. I was on air as well as being a producer. And really successful television, whether it's a live talk show or whether it's a documentary or whether it's a limited series, is about telling a story successfully and creating a brand around that story. If you think about things like The Sopranos or Breaking Bad, you know, those are all brands really at the end of the day. And so I was fascinated by looking at things through that lens. Um, I, through a series of, of sort of serendipitous occurrences, uh, was hired uh, by Harvard um, uh, to come in and be their director of communications. Mm -hmm. And I found that really, even schools like Harvard, and I've been at Harvard, and, uh, sorry, a bunch of other places, um, what they needed to do was tell their story in order to compete for the kinds of students that they needed and wanted. Uh, that, you know, at that point, higher ed was really in the dark ages as far as marketing is concerned. In fact, marketing was a dirty word and still is to some extent because it's perceived, and I think that this gets to the heart of our conversation about branding for faculty uh, and administrators, it, it's still seen in many quarters as being um, something that taints the academic purity of what an institution yes. does. It's seen as spin, as you well know. Yes. And for many people, that's getting over the hump. So to make a long story short, branding has been very good to me because as a television producer, I knew how to tell a good story. Mm -hmm. I knew that stories are what people remember, uh, that you can say everything is, you know, wonderful, you know, uh, meaningful, successful, but those are just words. What right. people remember are the stories that you tell. So that has led me to, uh, through many academic institutions, through many um, uh, private companies and nonprofits, and also working with individuals, particularly women who are at the top of their careers, but want to know what's next. Is there more for me? Am I putting myself forward in a way that tells my story? Um, and so branding for me, which is a highly misunderstood concept, um, is really about successful storytelling. That if, if you want people to see your value, or if you're an institution and you want more people to enroll, you have to tell a story that brings people to you. Um, and as I'm very fond of saying, um, it, you know, being good is not enough. Uh, you have to tell people why they should trust you, why they should like you, why they should come to your class or enroll in your institution. So that's a very long-winded answer to your question, but um, I hope that's helpful in just sort of, you know, giving 
giving a sense of why branding is intrinsically important to people in particular and that we are all brands at the end of the day. It's not just FedEx, it's not just Band-Aid, it's not just Lysol, we are all brands and it's our job to put those forward. So thank you, Lynn, that was very informative and you have had really an interesting um, career path. And so I think that our listeners may still kind of wonder what is branding? It is, I think in this age of social media, you see branding here, you see branding there, you think of some big name celebrities, but people may think like, what does that have to do with me? You know, I'm in higher ed, you know, I'm a faculty member or I'm an administrator. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not, you know, in my, um, you know, in my faculty role, I may not be on TikTok or maybe I am, or maybe I'm on Twitter, but I use not my name, right? So why, why do you, why do you think branding is misunderstood and why do you think it's important for people in higher ed to be really paying attention to this? Well, you know, I'm, I'm also fond of saying that higher ed is very late to the marketing game. Um, and I think the pandemic, and, and this is relevant to individuals too, but the pandemic has you know, rocked the foundations of, of, of higher ed uh, and has forced institutions to take a really hard look at what it is they're selling. Branding is, at the end of the day, about putting something into the marketplace and being able to attract the customers that you want to buy that product. And I apologize to all of the higher ed affiliated listeners today uh, for using business terms, because that's also been a suspect uh, that, you know, we are the ivory tower, we are above all that. Well, uh, here to tell you, you're not. Uh, and, and branding is not an intellectual concept, to, to answer your question. It's an emotional response. As I said earlier, stories are what we tell and people, gravitate to those stories emotionally, not intellectually. The more intellectual layers, and this is something that that uh, faculty in particular um, struggle with, the more of an intellectual layer you put on a brand, the less resonant it's going to be. It has to be authentic and it has to be emotional. Um, to, to get to the heart of your question of why is it important, because it's a really crowded world and it's a really crowded marketplace. And if you are going to succeed in whatever field you've chosen, whether you are uh, uh, you know, a faculty chair, whether you are a provost who wants to be president, um, whether you are an administrator who wants to move from the um, from the mid-level administrative uh, role to a more senior leadership role, you have to pay attention to how people perceive you. And so perception is the name of the game. And I think that's where higher ed, <coughs> excuse me, goes off the rail because people say, well, if I'm good, they will come. Right. They're, not, they're not gonna come. Uh, and if you don't, and I say this so many times, and I think it's what kind of let, when light bulbs go off, if you don't tell people how to think about you, they're going to make it up. And that is never a good strategy because there are so many messages in, in, in the universe. There are so many brands that are competing individual as well as corporate that are crashing into each other that if you don't take charge of that, then it is going to, it's going to, it's going to work against you. And by taking charge of it, you know, Loren, you and I have done such, such great work together. Um, and, and I so enjoyed it. Uh, but if you think of all of your assets and all of your, um, all of the things that you do really well and your accomplishments of sort of being billiard balls on a, on a pool table, yes. um, and they're all sort of going around like this, you have to put them into that triangular thing, whatever it's called. Is that a rack? Something yeah, like yes. that, right? And you have to decide which ones go where, what colors are important. And that's probably a simplistic um, uh, uh, analogy. But if you don't take charge of that, then you're going to be uh, you're going to be applying for positions. You're going to be going for tenure. You're going to be um, uh, out in the marketplace, um, uh, recruited by recruiters, and you're going to be at their mercy. Um, yeah. 
And it's also, I think that women in particular have a really hard time um, what touting their skills and ability because they see it as bragging. Uh, we've been brought up, particularly uh, in, in my generation um, and, and the ones close behind, that you don't call attention to yourself, that you let other people praise you, that you let other people put a tiara on your head and say, oh, thank you very much. That stuff just doesn't happen. Right. And so part of this is sort of this inner rolfing of ourselves to say, this is what I'm good at. This is my value, and this is why you should pay attention to me. There has to not only be a statement of value, which is authentic and comes from inside, but there also has to be almost a personal call to action, meaning this is why you should pay attention to me. This is what I can do for you. These are the results that I will produce. And it takes some really hard uh, tactical thinking and a lot of front end work, as you know, to put that all together. But once you have it, it's not only compelling to, to the people who are in a position to um, hire you or to promote you or to support you, it also gives you a whole new framework for thinking about yourself, which I know from experience is, is absolutely a winning strategy. So you work with somebody like you, you work with somebody like me, because it's really hard. I mean, it's even hard for me to do this for myself. It's very yes. hard to do it for yourself. And you know that, right? Yes. You need somebody who can say, wait a minute, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. You're putting this down here. This belongs here. And oh, by the way, let's figure out a series of keywords for you so that those words can begin to be part of your universe and they, they will permeate, you know, the, uh, the, the social media strategy. They will be part of how you describe yourself and you will begin to have that wonderful kind of organic viral, um, uh, profile on social media. And just a word about social media. Um, people I work with all the time. Say, I, you know, I, I don't need that. I, 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 you know, I don't need it. what they're really saying is I don't get it. Right. And I don't have right. time to get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might have been OK three or four years ago. And this is particularly true in academia because it's hard to even get the admissions office or the alumni affairs office to embrace social media, which right. is crazy. That's, that's just crazy talk. Um, but for individual faculty in particular or administrators, you've got to meet people where they are and it is no longer, um, you know, some sort of vague place out there. The marketplace is social media. It's TikTok. It's Facebook. Uh, it's Slack. It's, it's LinkedIn. It is, and it's tough. It is tough to conquer that universe. But where I you agree with you more. I could where, more. Yeah, where you start is with yourself. Yes. And, then, and then you put yourself out there. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no. I, I just wanted to say I couldn't agree with you more on several points, right? You, you have this great way of getting it all in. And I think that, you know, if we go back to higher ed and faculty administrators, staff sometimes, but not so much because I've worked with admissions staff and they have been like, yes, we need a social media strategy only for the administration to be like, yeah, well, no, we don't, we, no, we don't, right? Which means we don't understand it. And right. so I think that there's that piece of it. I also want to revisit this gender aspect of um, yeah. you know, not, not tooting your own horn, if you will, or mm -hmm. just hanging back and, and your good works will sort of shine for right. you. And right. I think that, that that doesn't happen. That That's our wish, but it doesn't happen. And right. so how we package our story, how we create our narrative, mm -hmm. how we brand ourselves is something that I think is, is a worthy investment. And branding and rebranding, because I, I should say to those of us uh, who are in higher ed and didn't really think about it this way, you already have a brand. You right. are your brand. Right. And how that brand comes across is your reputation, how you engage with people, what people see you as physically or even on paper or at conferences or in the right. faculty room or when you're talking to the president or provost, that's your brand. 
brand, right? right? And some of us could use a refresh on that brand, dare I say. Well, no, you're absolutely right. And you hit on a critical piece. Um, perception is reality, period, period. Now, some people see that as the bad news, right? But the good news is you you can change that, that yeah. you can craft it. You use the word narrative, which is such an important word here. Uh, and you can live that brand. And I think, you know, you've got to drop the idea that brands are, are suspect mm -hmm. uh, because we live in a world of perception. And, and again, I go back to my early days in television. It's about creating a reality, but that reality, you know, it's not, it's, it, it's not something that you sort of acquire and bring in and put on like a costume. Really good brands, take FedEx, for example, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Um, that is an authentic, intrinsic statement of value, right? And that's what one, an individual, you know, faculty, um, uh, you know, senior leader is trying desperately to find is what is that intrinsic value that I want to sell to you? Because let's face it, it's transactional. Yes. And, and if I can put my value forward to say to you, Loren, I, here's what I know keeps you up at night. And here's how I can solve that because I have accomplished X, Y, and Z. Um, and because I know about X, Y, and Z, it's a very compelling uh, proposition. And, it is. you know, it really is. And for those of us who may be thinking, okay, Maybe I'm, maybe I, I can listen to this and, and take it in, right? Um, I have done rebranding work with you. And mm -hmm. what I found so interesting was that you found me and you said, hey, hey, Dr. Hill, I'm following you. And I think you can, you know, benefit from just me talking to you about these few things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm open to that, right? Let's, let's have a conversation. And from there, we ended up doing, you know, some refining, right? Because you're like, here's where you are firing on all cylinders. I think it just needs a little bit of tweak. And here's an audience that I think we need to do a little bit of a different message for. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, that makes total sense to me. And so it, it takes someone with a expertise, mm -hmm. with an eye towards authenticity, right? Because look, right. let's face it, I get, you know, people are you know, trying to send proposals to me all the time. Like, hey, we got something for you. Hey, we can help you. And it, you have to really be sort of discerning about that. But I think if it's not gimmicky, right, which you are not, you you don't take on too much. You know, you're not trying to do volume. You are trying to do quality. And when you work with someone who does quality, then you get quality outcomes. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, Lauren, because um, it really is about throwing all the cards up in the air and seeing where they land. Mm -hmm. And I, I, what I love to do um, is have that first conversation with somebody who's like, ah, you know, I don't know. I mean, I sort of think, well, and we immediately go into it. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you're really good at. And that's where people stop. That's like, oh, I, I, I don't know. And so we begin to talk about it and suddenly everything starts to, everything becomes evident mm -hmm. that here are the pieces of gold. Here's what, here's what we need to work with. I just finished working with a woman who was a, um, not only a department chair, uh, but also um, had significant accomplishments on the administrative side and had been working at this, you know, top 10 university for um, 20 years, had completely lost sight of what she had done, what the value to the university was. And she couldn't understand why she couldn't sort of move either up or over into a right. different position. Right. And she kept saying to me, this is so therapeutic. I feel like I have just, you know, 
take in this huge deep breath and can see things in a different way. And again, that's not to say that what I do is so unique, but as with you, it's really a way of have, looking in a different mirror and having that mirror reflect back to you something that, I mean, if we don't value ourselves, right. who else is going to? Right. And if we can't say, this is what I'm good at and be able to articulate it, by the way, um, then nobody else can do it either. And I think people like you and me, and then I'll, I'll stop on this, not only give people a sense of their sort of core value, but we also give them the words to talk about it because it's very hard to write your own script. Uh, so the words are important too. Well, the other thing that I want to bring up, which is not so pleasant, is when you're working in industries and you may be a woman or a minority or there's some demographic box that is it makes you marginalized. Mm -hmm. When you're in some industries and you know specifically right now we're talking about higher ed, uh, it, it can be very unkind and un, unwelcoming. And so you're doing all of this work, right? You're, you're doing the scholarship, you're doing the teaching, you're running a department, you're running the lab, you're doing all this stuff and nobody is uh, throwing you a ticker tape parade. In fact, <laughs> they may be, you know, stealing your work or you know mm -hmm. get you say it in a meeting and then nobody's paying attention to it and then somebody else says it in the meeting and we can all feel what that looks like fill it in and they're like oh that's the greatest thing since sliced bread so this industry uh can really beat you up a lot mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so i i have found even in my own experience that it can be hard to highlight the the accomplishments you have when you are constantly being told that's not enough, th that idea sucks, or you know people are sort of you know there's succubus or <laughs> succubus vampires all around. So I think that working with someone like you or working with a coach can help you reorient to. Mm -hmm to like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you've done a lot of great things. It, you know, forget what your evaluation was, forget that for the moment, right? Forget that. Let's put this narrative together on paper that shows who you are and what you've done, because guess what? You are a rock star, right? And right. so have, have you encountered any of that? I wish I could say no. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who's been late to the party to really point the finger at the kind of gender and, uh, you know, uh, gender, racial, ethnic um, marginalization, particularly in industries like higher ed. Um, and I can only speak um, from the gender perspective, uh, but it is prevalent. It is rampant. In 2022, we are facing not only uh, misogyny, but ageism mm. uh, and, and racism. And it is, you know, I work with a lot of high, a lot of universities and colleges who um, are facing all of these issues and, and they think it's enough. And I'm not making too sweeping a statement here to say that, um, well, we'll issue a policy. And our policy will be this. Right. And there's never, and what students are saying now is, wait a second, where's the beef here? What are you actually going to do to combat this stuff? But to get back to women, um, I think that it is not simple. Um, I think that the value of knowing who you are and what you've done and your ultimate worth to an organization is your armor. It is how you can stand up in that boardroom or that faculty meeting and convey a sense of competency and of 
no BS. In other words, you don't have to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a shrinking violet. You just have to be yourself and be able to exude the brand that you are, which is this is what I know how to do. This is why I am able to speak on this subject. And this is why you should listen to me. May I also say that it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a dawning process in realization that you are valuable and that the only person who can who can hold up that billboard is you. And that takes some practice. We're never going to get rid of all of the things that plague uh, perception uh, of, of competency, particularly with women in higher ed, but we can be a flag waver. And I think eventually our daughter's generation will have an easier time of being equally valued and not having men take credit for their ideas and, and, and the evaluation of, of one's worth. Yes, yes, that that's that's great, Lynn. I, I think that what you said was just very moving, and so I appreciate that. And I think that I'd like to add, build on something that you said, and that it takes time, right? And it takes support, right? Yes. So you yes, absolutely. definitely need a coach. You need someone to help you rebrand, someone who will throw you a ticker tape parade and <laughs> say, yes, you really are, you are a rock star. And why not, right? There are people who say they're rock stars and you know that they're, you're like, what? I don't think so, <laughs> you know? And if you look at your CV next to their CV or their accomplishments, you have probably far exceeded all of that and and nobody's saying that you have to go in you know wearing it on uh, on the side you feel like look what I did but no. as you mentioned going into these places and spaces the boardrooms the faculty mm -hmm. meetings with confidence and confidence in yourself mm -hmm. really matters and if we do need support around that we need you know social support we need networking support we need coaches, we need branders, we need all of this as part of what I like to call is the team me. Yes, I completely agree. And I'll just add one thing to that, getting very tactical for the, for the moment. This isn't just something kind of airy fairy that you think and it's out there. Um, part of the process that you and I do with, with, with folks is to actually get this down in writing. In other words, what is your brand narrative? What is that one paragraph that summarizes all the things that you want people to know about you? And what are the key messages that, that make up that brand narrative? So that that brand narrative, which is probably what, four or five sentences, maybe a little longer, becomes your elevator speech. You're yeah. able to suddenly, when somebody says that awful thing of, oh, what do you do? You have an answer. And because you're branding yourself at that point and you have a personal website or you have a faculty bio that's on the university website, you've got your statement. Mm -hmm. So once you do this work, it pays you back again and again and again and again so that everywhere your name, let's say Lynn Chamberlain is mentioned, that narrative does not change. It is right there and, and you are building that perception every single day. So that's an important part of the work that you and I do. Yes, yes. Well, Lynn, this has been a very informative conversation today. I thank you so much for being yeah. my guest. And for those of you who are listening today, Lynn has been very gracious and she is offering a special discount. So if you are listening or you are watching be sure to contact Lynn and I'll have her contact information there. You can also Google her, Google her Lynn Chamberlain. And I want you to mention academic career podcast slash branding. And when you do that, you will get a 25% discount. So please contact Lynn you will, it will be well worth your time and investment and just have a call with her. Mm -hmm. And you can also always reach me, Dr. Loren M. Hill at theacclivity.com. So thank you again for watching and listening today. 
please be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks, Lynn. You're welcome.